everyone, Nate Ortiz here, and this is Walking in Power, and today I want to talk about the word anxiety. Now, I know we hear that word, and some of you might already be thinking, well, I don't really deal with anxiety, I don't feel anxious about anything, but I think you might know someone who is anxious, or maybe yourself are starting to feel anxious thoughts. You know, I, I've you know, read many times in reports and, you know, talking with friends and talking with people that I meet with and sometimes anxiousness creeps up on you and you're not even aware of it. You're not even sure of where it's coming from or what the root is. So whether you are dealing with anxiety or maybe you know someone who's dealing with anxiety, I just want to bring a word of comfort to you uh, to help you to wrap your mind around some of these things that, um, yeah, you, know, so you might you know see a counselor or someone else, but also just what the Word of God says about it for your life, because uh, I think how we cope with anxiety is is also very important. Sometimes we, when we're pressed, when we're pressed or we're struggling, we go to things that we know, and sometimes we go to things that make us feel some type of instant feeling, but it's not ultimately long term uh, healthy for us. So we want to find things that in God's Word that help us to walk through this. But in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, here's what it says. It says, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more, much more than they? And who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Now, I want to jump down to verse 31 here. It says, do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, which your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Um, that last sentence there, I think that's true, that every day feels like it has enough problems, enough situations, enough challenges, obstacles that I could just focus on this. But um, th the whole point of this passage, right, is that in these moments of anxiousness or, or um, where we're just feeling just kind of distant from God or really not sure what's next, um, no one likes to feel uncertain. So it causes a sense of anxiety in us. But in these moments, it, God's really challenging us in the scripture to pull back, pull back a little bit from your situation and think about the, the big scope where we think we see a bird flying in the sky that right there there's no grocery store that the bird goes to but our heavenly father all right has provided right ways for that bird to sustain its life throughout this world right throughout this this earth that it's living in and i think when we think about the, in that those terms that there's there's no living thing on this planet um you know person or human that God's not going to provide provide for. And that looks lots of different ways. Obviously throughout the world, there's lots of challenges and obstacles and, and struggles. Um, but what I'm saying is that God is there for us in our moments of need. So when we think about the things in our lives, right? It says, don't worry about what you're gonna wear. Don't worry about tomorrow, but to be present in the moment. So when we think about being present in the moment, are we looking at our social media feeds? Are we looking at text message? Are we always, our mind always going and going and going that we don't even give it time to rest and to hear from God? So to be present in the moment, I encourage you to do that this week, right? That's the first thing I would say in, in, in pushing away anxiety is to really just say, can I be present in the moment that I'm in? Am I talking to someone? Are we, are we watching? Are you watching this video and you multi, you know, simultaneously doing something else now because you know, we're, we're meant to multitask? But sometimes we're just meant to really just sit and just listen and receive and process. And there's something to be said about that. So be a person who's present. Be in the moment. Be all in, whether it's a conversation, whether you're working on something. Uh, whatever it is, just be focused on what's in front of you. Don't always let your mind wander to, well, what's going on here? Or I got to do this or I got to do that. Those things will, will come to you. All right? Tr trouble will always find you. Challenges will always find you. But making sure that you are doing what you need to be doing and and being you know prayed up, being around people who are encouraging to you, you know, reading the scriptures, getting closer to God, uh, those are only things that you can do. And worrying about other things is not going to help you get closer uh, to God. So be present in the moment. The other thing that it says is that uh, seek the fir uh, seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What does it look like to seek the kingdom of God? Um, I think that's a really powerful and big question. 
uh, the kingdom of God, uh, according to the scriptures, it says it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so when I think about righteousness, I think about many times in our lives, I say it all the time, is that we you don't want to be right. You can be right and not be righteous. And you want to be a person who says, I don't want to be right all the time. I don't want to prove and say, like, well, I'm right, I'm right, you're wrong. But to be someone saying, what's God's heart in this situation? What's God's heart for this person? Uh, so when you go throughout your day, right, be righteous. Be a righteous person that people look at you and say, yeah, it's an upstanding person. They're full of character, they're full of integrity. They're who you are in private. They're who you are in public. That That's just who they are. Um, that's the kind of person you want to be when you're righteous. Um, peace. Peace is, uh, man, such a premium nowadays that people cannot uh, seem to find inner peace within themselves. So they cause chaos around them or they look for other things to calm the peace within them. Um, but when you seek peace, you know, the Bible talks about the God who gives peace that passes all understanding. And he's the only one that can, can give the kind of peace that you're looking for. Um, other things in this world can't give it to you the way that God can uh, give it to you. And so you want to be a person who is seeking peace with God, quieting yourself before him, what's God speaking to you. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, living with the Holy Spirit is something that you know, we talked about um, before, but the uh, Holy Spirit really helps guide you. It, I, I say it, I said it last video, but the Holy Spirit will guide you in all truth. And the Holy Spirit will guide you in the tough moments of life. So when you seek the kingdom of God, when you talk about that, and all these other things will be added unto you, right? Are we seeking righteousness? Are we seeking to live a righteous life? Are we someone who's, you know, searching for, um, uh, you, um, you know, joy, you know, uh, in, you know, the Holy Spirit? Um, are we people who are um, seeking peace as well? And so, so I said out of order, but, you know, righteousness, peace, and, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Um, are these things that we're seeking? Uh, are we, are we saying, God, I want to have the kingdom of God within me. Let these three things be um, evident in my life, the people I talk to, the people I, I run into. Um, let those things be. And I think when we, we pull back and we think about eternity, we think about the scope of what really matters in the shadow of eternity, um, there's things that we just let go. There's things that we say, is it worth holding to unforgiveness? Is it worth just being angry? Is it worth being a gossip? Is it worth all these things? And I would say no in the light of eternity. Yeah, there's healing that takes place. Am I saying you just have to love this person right away, even though they hurt you deeply and forget that you had any pain or trauma? No, no, that's not what I'm saying either. But what I'm saying is you can't hold on to that and, and expect peace just to, to interject when you are just um, holding on to anger and you are deciding to let that consume your thoughts, your mind, you know, your actions, all those things. So you want to be a person that can, uh, you know, exercise the kingdom of God in your life. And when you begin to do that, when you begin to be present in the moments that you're in with God, I think you begin to see a shift in how you are taking perspective, right? You are control. You, know, you must take your thoughts captive and bring them to God. You're the person who must think about um, you know, what angers you, who angers you, right? You're giving that person power or authority. When you say, God, you have the authority and power in my life to help me become who you've called me to become. So listen, wherever you are today, uh, whether you are dealing with anxiety, whether you know someone who's dealing with, dealing with anxiety, um, a friend or a family member, um, you know, be a person who is just letting the kingdom of God, right? The righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit, letting those things, um, guide your relationships, guide yourself, um, and be present in those moments with those people and, you know, with yourself, with God. Um, that's one of the ways I feel like scripture lines out of how we could push just anxiety away from us, right? It's going to try to creep up on us, but we have to put that distance between us. And I believe that can help you do that, you know, in, in your faith. So listen, I just want to pray before we go and, uh, pray blessing upon your day you know, upon your week, whatever that looks like for you. But let me, um, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for the people who are listening to this video. Lord, you know who needs to hear it. You know who out there is dealing with anxiety or struggling or is just um, yeah, help, you know, with a loved one who's, who's struggling or a friend. Lord, I just pray that your spirit would help us Lord, to push the thoughts of anxiety away or the things that make us anxious to make those hard choices and decisions. Lord, you uh, you care for us deeply. You love us, Lord, so much. Lord, you care for the flowers in the field and the birds in the air. How much more do you care for us? Lord, let us walk throughout this week with that assurance 
in our hearts that you love us so much. So Father, we pray blessing uh, upon uh, each person and upon their week. In your name we pray, amen. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this message today and I look forward to next time.